So apparently I upset a lot of people in the shop tour video and that's because I didn't have a Rustler 4x4 project on the wall. There was a good reason guys, the thing is really dirty, but I made some space for it, threw it up there anyway, just so you could see it's got a spot on the wall. And to make up for not having it in that video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a follow up to our project. Today we're going to install the high intensity light bar set and the chassis brace set. I have it over here on the workbench. Let's go take a closer look before we get it on the truck. Before we start our build, I want to show you guys what's in the kit. So here is the off-road lighting set, and this thing is really well packaged. This is a nice set here. Even the parts are located in this foam. Really nice stuff going on. All right, so inside the box is an instruction manual, and then uh, here is the front bumper with the LED light bar already installed in it. That just looks rad. <laughs> That's gonna go on really easily. Already pre-wired, you don't have to do anything. And here is the roof skid with the light bar in it. That looks awesome as well. Can't wait to see that thing lit up. And then there's a couple other parts in here. So this is a little tap that goes into the battery. Uh, here is the module for the power supply. Uh, we also have some zip ties in here and some hardware. And then in the bottom, don't miss out in the bottom, we have this decal sheet, or uh, sorry, it's a piece of masking tape. And this is gonna help us figure out where we need to cut a hole in the body so we could run all of our wires through the body uh, and make it look all nice. And then over here is the chassis brace set. So as you would expect, here's the brace. Here is the mount for the brace. We've got hardware as well, and then an instruction sheet to put that together. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get our wrestler four x four off the wall over here onto the workbench, and we'll start the build. So here is my really, really dirty wrestler four x four. This is not a good example of how you should leave a car stored. I just didn't have time to clean it, and you know what? Since we're gonna go run it right after we install these parts, I'm not too worried about it right now. But first up, we have to remove the telemetry unit here. The telemetry unit can't be used uh, with this new brace set up because this mount right here goes right where the telemetry unit is. So I'm gonna take a few minutes, rip that out, and we can move on to installing this upper brace. With the optional telemetry unit out of the truck, now we'll have the space to put the front mount in. But uh, before we do that, we have to remove the two front screws that secure the bulkhead to the chassis. And while I'm at it, I'm going to remove the two in the rear and then the two right in front of it that secure the motor mount because that's where the rear brace is going to go. So I will go remove those and then we can get closer to installing the brace. With our screws removed from the chassis, now it's time to go and pre-assemble this brace. So I've got everything laid out here. Make sure that you use the correct front brace. This one has an R for the rustler, and then the other one has an S for the, uh, the slash. Uh, so there's the front, there is the rear, and we're going to need two certain screws from the screw pack, the ones with the thread lock on them. So these are going to be used here, and this basically makes sure that this screw won't back out from the upper brace. So just slide the brace into the mount, and secure them nice and snug with these screws. There's our new brace assembled. This thing looks awesome and look how easy it is to drop in now. Just gotta take this over to the car and drop it right in. Look at that. Now we just have to secure it using the screws that came with the kit. And uh, these are just longer screws to make up the difference in the height of the new mounts here. So we'll slide those button heads in the front. The tall ones in the rear. And then these new cap heads go into the motor mount. And then these two short screws go up here in this mount.
There you have it, the chassis brace is installed. This thing looks awesome, and I'm sure it's really going to stiffen up this chassis so there's no more flex in it. Uh, I, I thought it was a really good chassis to begin with, but uh, I've heard a lot of people say some good things about this chassis brace, so I'm excited to try it out. And uh, one thing I also wanted to mention is this Traxxas pit mat. It has really come in handy as far as just separating screws and keeping everything nice and organized and even collecting all my grime from the truck. Uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier to clean it up later rather than this stuff being all over my new workbench. All right, next up, we're going to move to the off-road light kit. So I am gonna get this thing organized and we'll start installing it. I've got my off-road light kit unboxed and everything laid out here on the workbench. And over here is the instruction manual. I'm actually going to start off with step six because I still have my dirty truck over here on the workbench. And I wanna go ahead and install the power supply and the tap into the connector. So that's what we're going to do first. And we're going to start off here with the power supply. They give you two screws to install it. And this is just simply gonna go over here underneath this brace. So you'll just have to slide this under. There we go, get the wires out of the way and it will mount to these two mounting bosses right here. With the tap in place, we just have to install the cover with the supplied hardware. Here's the balance tap installed on the connector. And right after doing that, I just plugged in the mini JST connector here. Uh, and you could go ahead and use the supplied zip ties to secure this down so it doesn't flop around. But next up, I am going to install the bumper. That's actually step number four. But again, since I have my dirty truck over here, working on the truck is going to uh, take place first. So all I have to do is remove the two screws in the front of the bumper. And then let me flip this over to show you the bottom. Here are the three screws that have to be removed from the bottom. And if your uh, screws are packed with dirt, here's a little tip for you. Just take an X-Acto knife and just clean out the dirt before you try to stick a, uh, an Allen wrench in there because that's how stripped out screws happen. You don't get the hex bit all the way into the head here and that causes the screw to strip out. So make sure you get all the dirt out of here first. Here's the new front bumper installed. This thing looks pretty rad. After bolting it in place, I ran the wire over here to the uh, bumper mount, secured it with a zip tie so it doesn't interfere with the body when the body's on, then ran it through the shock tower so it doesn't interfere with the suspension, and then just simply plugged it into the power supply. All right, with that done, next up we have to move on to the body. So. This is going to take a little bit more work because we're gonna to have to remove the top skid. Uh, we're going to have to cut some holes and stuff. So let me set up the workbench and uh, we'll get going on that. All right, I'm set up now to work on the body and I'm actually gonna go back to the factory body that came with the truck. Uh, the green and blue one here because the orange buddy I did for the project is pretty well beat up. So this body is still in great shape and to start off we need to remove the roof skid. So you're just going to flip it over and remove the four cap head screws that secure that skid plate to the top. The roof skid just slides right off and then next up we're going to install this masking sheet right here. This is really cool. This is going to make life a lot easier. So what you're going to do is you're going to peel the backing off and stick this down to the top of the body. These notches here line up with these holes and that will allow you to drill the holes right where they need to be. Now, you will need some tools for that. You will need a reamer and some scissors to cut it out. You're gonna drill two 12 millimeter holes and then cut uh, the center section of it out. So I'm gonna go stick this down and show you how to do that. All right, to ream the holes out in the body, all you're gonna do is take a reamer such as this Traxxas reamer here, put it in the center of the circle and ream out the holes. You have to puncture through the body and just keep on turning this reamer until it opens up the hole to a 12 millimeter hole. Once the two holes are reamed out, simply take a pair of Lexan scissors and cut on the dotted line, connecting the two top halves of the circles and that will open up our large hole for our wires to run through. With the hole in the roof cut out, now we can take our new roof skid with LED light bar, slide the wires in, and then grab our factory hardware and bolt it back down. 
There it is, our new roof skid installed. I secured the wire to the inner brace here with the uh, included zip tie. Now all we have to do is plug in the JST connector when we go to run this thing. Let me go do that now so you can see how these lights look. How sick does that look? Those LED lights are so bright. Check out the red rear lights as well. This thing is going to look sick out on the dirt. Let's head outside and drive it. It's like a heat wave out here. It's 41 degrees. I'm at the BMX track and uh, I have a couple 2S packs with me, a couple 3S packs I'm gonna run around. So let's head over to the track and pull the throttle. Obviously, we've got a lot to talk about because this thing is missing some wheels. But over there at the BMX track, the Rustler 4x4 is still a blast to drive. And with the high intensity lights on the roof and in the bumper, it looks really, really cool. They were really bright even in the daytime. Just love the look of them on the truck. And the kit, I think, is really easy to install. It's a worthwhile option, in my opinion, just for the, for the look factor. And, uh, you know, I think it actually helps you with this truck a little bit because it kind of reminds you to unplug the battery because as soon as you plug the battery in, the lights come on. So when you're done for the day, it kind of reminds you, hey, unplug your pack, and that way it won't deep discharge. I saw online the other day, somebody was complaining, they left their pack plugged in, and then the pack was dead. So this is a, a little bit of a reminder too. Uh, the chassis brace. The chassis brace, I think, works really well. That track was really beat up, but I also beat up the truck. I was doing cartwheels and endos and stuff like that, and everything seems to be fine. I think it helps, you know, make the chassis a bit more rigid. It allows the suspension to do its job. Uh, I think that's a worthwhile addition to this truck as well. Now, as you can see, you know, it's missing you know, the, the wheels. So what happened? I came down on the side and it snapped the universal uh, axle ends. And uh, this happened before with the sledgehammer tires. I know Traxxas has hardened constant velocity shafts now. I got them in for the haul, so I think I'm going to try them out on here. Uh, the ones that I installed during our build, uh, I think they're good for the stock tires, but not the sledgehammer tires. You know, I've been driving this truck a lot in the backyard and didn't have a brake, but as soon as I came off a big jump, you know, obviously both axle shafts broke. So. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going forward using these, uh, that combo, and uh, you know maybe finding something else to work. But uh, overall, I think this is a pretty fun part of the series. You know, a little bit of a bummer that you have to take out the expander unit if you want to use this stuff. But uh, you know what? This is, you know, for speed runs and stuff like that is what I primarily use this unit for. So I don't need it when I'm out there bashing. But again, I had fun putting this all together. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't done so yet, please click the subscribe button and the notifications bell. Throw the video a like, and we'll see you back soon for some more RC Driver videos.